Today we're creating a digital product that will actually sell using nothing but free tools. The reason some creators are making thousands of dollars a month with digital products is because they've cracked the code on rapid product creation. It may seem like they have a magic touch that every product they create is a winner. And of course, that's how it always looks. If they've been doing it a while, they'll have more winners, of course. But the superstar digital product creators started where all of us did at zero. The key to success is to keep on creating stuff and putting it out there for sale just like they do. It's like in sports. The more shots you take, the more likely it is that you'll hit a winner. And of course, you miss 100% of the shots you don't take. Most people think you need expensive software, design skills, or a huge budget to create digital products that look professional. And it's one of the biggest barriers stopping people from starting their digital product business. But here's the thing, there's a better way. I've analyzed hundreds of successful digital product creators. I've created myself about a hundred products. We all do the same thing, which is find a small problem that a lot of people have and are willing to spend money on fixing and then write up a guide that helps them solve that problem and sell it to them. In this video, you and I are gonna build a simple digital PDF product, one that we can sell, and we're gonna do this at hyperspeed using nothing but ChatGPT and Canva. So buckle up because we're about to start flying through this. By the way, I'm Jim Shirley. I've sold thousands of products and courses online, and this is the exact process I use when I wanna create a new digital product. And hey, I've got this free community where I share all the prompts I use in this video and in all of my videos. Plus, there are a number of free courses that show you how to do all this cool stuff with regards to having a business online. You get access to all of it, plus you get access to ask me questions and that kind of thing. You are welcome to join too. I'd love to have you become a member. The link to do that is just down below this video in the description, okay? I know you're excited to get to the part where we actually start creating the product, but just give me one second here because I think this is important. All right, here's what usually happens when someone tries to create their first digital product. They have this brilliant idea, like maybe it's a productivity planner or making a course or a pack of templates in Canva. They're excited. They can already picture people buying it. And then reality hits. You open up your computer and you start staring at a blank screen and you're wondering like, how do you create this thing? Then suddenly the software becomes confusing. AI isn't working content feels overwhelming and you start to question whether this really is a good idea. Maybe all this work will just be for nothing. And suddenly the whole thing sounds overwhelming and like it won't work. Does that sound familiar? I know I personally face that almost every time I create a product and I think it's just our natural response from our brains to try to protect us from something. But what I'm about to show you actually changes that. I call it the 90-10 solution. Now think about the last time you bought a digital product online. Maybe it was a PDF, a template, a mini course, whatever. Here's what you probably didn't realize. 90% of what made that product valuable wasn't the fancy design or complex features. It was the actual content and how it solved your specific problem. And the remaining 10%, well, that was just making it look nice. But most creators get this completely backwards. They spend 90% of their time trying to make things look perfect and only 10% on what actually matters, which is finding the problem and then helping someone solve it. That's exactly why this method I'm about to show you works so well. It forces you to focus on seeing little solvable problems first, then we use the AI tools to speed create a product and get it out there. Before you create anything, you need to know it's going to sell and sell well. Now, ChatGPT can easily be your market research assistant for this stuff, but you'll also sometimes just see obvious problems out there that you might want to help try and solve. Basically, using your HI or human intelligence instead of or in addition to artificial intelligence or AI. So let's jump over to the screen. I'm going to show a prompt here, but I'm also going to talk about how I came up with the idea for this target audience, and it's totally practical. 
Okay, so we're back over here on ChatGPT. Okay, so I'm gonna enter this simple prompt and you'll see there's nothing really special about it. I've got it made generic. We'll have it in the prompt document that you can get inside my free community. And what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna mix up a little human intelligence with artificial intelligence here because one of the things that I see all the time because I actually go on here is people struggling to sell stuff on Facebook Marketplace, right? So there's listing after listing after listing, and some people do a good job with their listings, some people do not. So we're gonna ask ChatGPT about that. So I just wanna kinda of give that as an example. That's something I'm actually gonna create a PDF about, and we'll see if we can sell that. You've probably got some ideas too that you run across in your everyday life, and so that's where I would say, don't just try to create stuff that's just for like the online marketers world or stuff that just ChatGPT comes up with for you. Think about like what you see in your everyday life, like where are problems that crop up all the time and then ask ChatGPT. So I'm gonna say, I wanna create a digital product for people selling, people trying to sell their stuff on book market. Let's see what it gives. Look at that, curse words from ChatGPT, whoa, okay. So the thing that I think that I would want to kind of focus on here in my little guide are these two pieces. So that's what we'll do. Now here's a place where people sometimes mess up is they take the first things that you see in the response from ChatGPT and they start creating a product from it. So while these are small but solvable problems, getting lowballed or ghosted, for example, or items just sitting there and we could create a product around that, it's probably not a great idea that's why you want to sort of mix your actual common sense and knowledge with this stuff. So I already know though that photos and description writing are like the keys to getting your product sold in any place, not just Facebook Marketplace. That's like one of the things that we need when we're selling our own products. So the next thing we'll do is we'll ask for an outline for a PDF guide. I like this. Sell it fast, the simple guide to high click listings on Facebook Marketplace. And a subtitle, yeah, that's pretty good. Okay, so we've been going through this and it keeps asking me if it wants me to like style things out and make it more professional and stuff. So I kept saying, yeah, let's do it. And so ChatGPT, I can see where they're going with this. So this isn't uh, what, this isn't good enough for, for us. However, I can see that they're kind of moving in this direction and that probably in the future chat GPT is going to be capable of actually producing something fancy looking uh, as a document. So really once we get this content, our next step is the design piece. And so like I talked about earlier in the video, we want 90% of our work and effort and everything to be focused in on giving people value, solving a real solvable problem, that actually is something that people are willing to pay for. And then we wanna spend about 10% of our time just making it look nice. This next part is gonna blow your mind because I've figured out how to do something that, I learned it from someone else on YouTube, but I figured out a way to do something in Canva that's pretty cool and it'll save us some time. So let's uh, start by just going over to our document here, okay? So what I did, I just took my content from ChatGPT, okay? And like, like I often do, I just pasted that into our uh, Google Doc, okay? And then what I did is I just went through, so like this is basically kind of what it gave me, and I just kind of went through and put page separators in between some of the text and just spaced some things out, right? Made the, the fonts the right size that I like them and all that stuff. Here, let me blow it up a little bit. So this was just pasting from ChatGPT. Yeah, paste from Markdown. That's what I always do when I'm copying stuff out of ChatGPT or Claude or wherever and pasting it into Google Docs and then you get the headings and everything in there. Okay, so, and then one of the things that I did here is you'll kind of see I left some space at the top of the pages, right? So I did that on purpose because the next thing we're gonna do is, this is the cool trick in Canva, so what we do here is we just say, download this Google Doc, okay? We're gonna save it as a PDF, all right? So let's do that, all right? And then I'll just hit save. And then what we do is we bounce over here to Canva, 
Okay, and from your home page, you can basically upload media, and then we're just going to upload a file, and then I'm just going to grab that document and open it. And this is going to blow your mind. This is where, like, uh, I've been able to save a ton of time since I figured this trick out. I'm so glad that I learned this. But, okay, so what happens here is, okay, let me go back to the home page here. All right, so you've got all your designs and all of that stuff. Well, whatever the, the PDF that you just uploaded is going to be right there as like a new design inside of your Canva homepage. All right, but what is so cool about this is that when you upload the PDF this way, look at this. It makes the text like in Canva, right? And so now I've got that whole document, okay, and everything in here. I can like change the fonts, right? I can, you know, do whatever I want with this just like I would in Canva. Okay, so I'm just going to undo that because I'm, I'm just going to leave the font as Arial because I don't care. That's fine. Again, you know, it's kind of 10% on the design part. So if I want to be fast, then I'm just going to keep, keep what I had. But now, see, I've got this space up here. And what I can do is like I can go to elements, right? And I can say like a top border. Yeah, exactly. And you can just go into your graphics and stuff. And then now you can like grab stuff and make your document look all fancy because it's in Canva. Now let me just show you how this works, okay? So I'm just going to drag that so it's as big as the page, and then I'll just kind of move it up here. I could change the colors, but I think I'm just going to accept that as it is. So now you see, like, I'm on page three, and I've kind of placed it. And you, you don't have to, like, all you have to do is just hit copy on this, like, so just this red border thing, right? I just hit Control-C, copy. And then every page that I go to, like if I just hit paste, it'll just put it right up there, okay? So now I can just go through, scroll through all my pages, and now I can put a cool top, you know, at the top of each of these pages, right? Okay, you don't even have to like click, you just have to be kind of on the page, all right? And then, now there's a couple of things like those lines I'm gonna have to go back and remove, but all right, that one ended up on the wrong page, but there we go. Go to this last page, boom. And what's super nice is now that we're in Canva, like, okay, final success secret. Let's just look for some like, success thing, you know, like any kind of graphic, right? And we could, yeah, I mean, just do something like this. It kind of matches, right? But see now how easy it is to like, design this document and style it out, right? And then once you've got that, again, I like to shrink things down, kind of that publishing trick, and just scroll through so I can make sure I got it right on all the right pages here, okay? And then all we have to do is take our cover page that we made before, all right? And that looked like this, okay? So all I did for that was just create an ebook cover, right? So let's just do that really quick because all that takes from the home page is just to go create a new I don't want to upload this time. I just want to do an ebook cover, okay? And then you just pick one and you just go ahead and say customize it. That'll open a new page and then you just Put your title in and stuff like that. That's all I did on this one. Okay. And so that was just one of the templates. I just changed the title, put my name on it, and now all I have to do is just kind of highlight everything here. I'm just holding my mouse down and like just grabbing everything, right? And then I hit copy, like control C or whatever. Go back to my first page here. And I'm just going to paste that stuff on there. Here, let me zoom back in. Now, the page sizes are a little different here, so that's okay. I'm just going to delete that previous text. And then I just have to go back to this cover. For some reason, I didn't grab the background or whatever, but I'm just going to hit Control-C again after I click on this background area. Come back over here. Hit Paste. All right. Still got a white square there from earlier. Uh, but that's okay. 
And so now what we can do is we can just kind of center this stuff, right? This page size is just a little different, so I'm just going to show you how that works. There's like a filter thing over the top of this image, so I'm just going to drag that over. And then I'm just going to take this little emojis thing or whatever it is and just make it bigger, right? Then I'm going to grab this filter and drag it and make it bigger so it covers everything. Okay, put my title there and we can even just kind of like drag this bigger, right? What I'm going to do is just widen this out a little bit. Okay, so let's shrink back down and just kind of look at this. Yeah, not bad, right? So how long did that take? Not long. So our document's written. It's got kind of a nice format to it. And we can add some images up and down here. Yeah, I don't know. You know, maybe, maybe kind of hard to find something that we really want to use here. How about like a video element? I mean, we could do something like that, right? just to kind of fill up space on some of those pages. So by no means am I like a designer. So I just kind of, I like to make these look nice and I figured this little approach out and it just makes it so fast. I can edit the text if I need to, but really I don't hardly ever have to. All I need to do is just add some fancy border stuff and put my cover on it. And then boom, we're ready to download this thing as a PDF, okay? Which is what we're going to do 14 pages and that'll be like our final book ready to go okay so that is my friends how we take ChatGPT, a little human intelligence and canva and basically make a ready to sell course pdf that um will make us some money so yeah Hey, listen, if you found this valuable, then please give it a like. And I would love to have you as a subscriber, too, if you're not already. And listen, there's some videos popping up on screen right now, so check those out. Some good stuff in there. And uh, we'll look forward to seeing you at the next video.